So we have a parallelogram right over here. What I want to prove is that its diagonals bisect each other. So the first thing that we can think about, these aren't just diagonals. These are lines that are intersecting parallel lines. So you can also view them as transversals. And if we focus on DB right over here, we see that it intersects DC and AB. And since they're, those we know are parallelogram, we know that they're parallel. This is a parallelogram. We know that alternate interior angles must be congruent. So that angle must be equal to that angle there. And let me make a label here. Let me call that middle point E. So we know that angle ABE, we know that angle ABE must be congruent to angle CDE to angle CDE by alternate interior angles of a transversal intersecting parallel lines. A alternate interior alternate interior angles. Now if we look at if we look at diagonal AC or we should call it transversal AC, we can make the same argument. It intersects here and here. These two lines are parallel, so alternate interior angles must be congruent. So angle DEC must be, so let me write this down, angle DEC must be congruent to angle BAE. BAE to angle B angle BAE by for the exact same reason. Now we have something interesting. If we look at this top triangle over here and this bottom triangle, we have one set of corresponding angles that are congruent. We have, we have a side in between that's going to be congruent. Actually, let me write that down explicitly. We know, we know and we, we've proved this to ourselves in the previous video, that parallelograms not only are opposite sides parallel, they are also congruent. So we know from the previous video that that side is equal to that side. So let me go back to what I was saying. We have two sets of corresponding angles that are congruent. We have a side in between that's congruent. And then we have another set of corresponding angles that are congruent. So we know that this triangle is congruent to that triangle by angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. So we know that triangle, I'm going to go from the blue to the orange to the last one. Triangle A, B, E is congruent to triangle blue, orange, and the last one, C, D, E. C, D, E by angle side angle congruency. Angle side angle congruency. Now, what does that do for us? Well, we know if two triangles are congruent, all of their corresponding features, especially all of their corresponding sides are congruent. So we know that side, we know that side EC, side EC corresponds to side EA. Or I could say side AE, we could say side AE. Correspond, AE corresponds to side CE, to CE. They're corresponding sides of congruent triangles, so their measures or their lengths must be the same. So AE must be equal to CE. Let me put two slashes since I already used one slash over here. Now, by the same exact logic, we know that DE, we know that, let me focus on this, we know that BE, we know that BE must be equal to DE. BE must be equal to DE. Once again, so they're corresponding sides of two congruent triangles, so they must have the same length. So this is corresponding sides of congruent congruent triangles. So BE, BE is equal to DE. And we've done our proof. We've shown that, look, diagonal DB is splitting AC into two segments of equal length and vice versa. AC is splitting DB into two segments of equal length. So they are bisecting each other. Now let's go the other way around. Let's prove to ourselves if that, that if, if, the, if we have two diagonals of a quadrilateral that are bisecting each other, that we are dealing with a parallelogram. So let me see. So we're going to assume that we, the two diagonals are bisecting each other. So we're assuming that that is equal to that and that that right over there is equal to that. Given that, we want to prove that this is a parallelogram. And to do that, we just have to remind ourselves, we just have to remind ourselves that this angle is going to be equal to that angle. It's one of the first things we learned because they are vertical angles. So let me write this down. C, let me label this point, CED, angle CED is going to be equal to or is congruent to angle, so I start at C, is BEA, angle BEA. 
And that, what is that? Well, that shows us that these two triangles are congruent, because we have a corresponding size that are congruent, an angle in between, and then another side. So we now know that triangle, I'll keep this in yellow, triangle A, A, E, B is congruent to triangle A, E, B is congruent to triangle D, E, C. D, E, C by side angle side congruency. Side angle side congruency by S, A, S congruent, congruent triangles. Fair enough. Now, if we know that two triangles are congruent, we know that all of the corresponding sides and angles are congruent. So for example, we know that angle C, D, E, angle C, D, E, angle C, D, E, is going to be congruent to angle. You can see C, D, E is going to be congruent to B, A, E. B, A, E is going to be congruent to angle B, to angle B, A, E. And this is just corresponding angles corresponding angles angles of congruent of congruent triangles and now we have we have this transversal or this can, this kind of can, transversal of these two lines that could be parallel if the alternate interior angles are are congruent and we see that they are these two are kind of candidate alternate alternate interior angles and they are congruent so ab must be parallel to cd so ab I'll just draw one arrow. AB must be parallel to CD. AB is parallel to CD by alternate interior angles congruent of parallel lines. I'm just writing in some shorthand. Forgive the uh, cryptic nature of it, although I'm saying it out. And so we can then do the exact same logic. We've just shown that these two sides are parallel. We can then do the exact same logic to show that these two sides are parallel. And I won't necessarily write it all out, but it's the exact same proof to show that these two. So first of all, we know that this angle is congruent to that angle right over there. And then we know, actually, let me write it out. So we know that angle AEC, angle AEC is congruent to angle D E C let me D E B I should say D E B angle D E B they are vertical angles vertical angles and that was our reason up here as well vertical vertical angles and then we see that triangle A E C must be congruent to triangle D E B by side angle side so then we have triangle A E C must be congruent to triangle DEB by SAS congruency. Then we know that corresponding angles must be congruent, so that we know that angle, so for example, angle CAE, angle CAE must be congruent to angle BDE, BDE, angle BDE. And this is their corresponding angles of congruent triangles. So CAE, CAE, let me do this in a new color. CAE, CAE must be congruent to B to BDE. B D E. And now we have a transversal. The alternate interior angles are congruent. So the two lines that the transversal is intersecting must be parallel. So this must be parallel to that. So then we have AC, AC must be parallel to BD, BD by alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles. And we're done. We've just proven that if the diagonals bisect each other, if we start that as a given, then we end at a point where we say, hey, the opposite sides of this quadrilateral must be parallel, or that ABCD is a parallelogram.